Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! Here's your Sioux Falls physics teachers, and today we're going to look at a problem involving the Doppler effect. We have a jet airplane emitting a sound of 800 hertz and traveling at a velocity of 30 meters per second. We need to calculate the perceived frequency when that jet approaches and passes a stationary observer. To start with, let's look at our Doppler effect equation. Remember that our perceived frequency, or F prime, is equal to the initial frequency times a ratio of velocities. On the top, we have V plus or minus VO. On the bottom, we have V plus or minus VS. Now the first thing, of course, would be to remember what these velocities stand for. V without a subscript is simply the velocity of sound. In this case, there's been no information given to us that would give us any extreme circumstances, so we can assume that our velocity of sound will be the normal value of 340 meters per second. VO, in this case, is the velocity of the observer. And since our observer is at rest, that's going to be zero in both cases. V sub s is going to be the velocity of the plane, and so that would be then 30 meters per second. Now that gives us the matter of the plus or minus. In this case, again, remember there is kind of a set of rules that will help you identify whether or not you should add or subtract. However, you can also do it through common sense. For instance, if we look at the observer here, as the jet approaches, we can see that those high pressure areas of the sound wave are closer together. So we know that for him, that frequency will be a higher value than the original value of 800 hertz. So if we look at the math behind this, we have 800 hertz for our original frequency. The top part of our equation is simply 340 for the velocity of sound, plus or minus zero since our observer is not moving. On the bottom part of the equation, we again have 340 for the velocity of sound. In order for us to get a higher value than our original frequency, we need to subtract 30. That way we'll end up with a higher value on top of the fraction. And in fact, if we work out the value of that fraction, we find that the entire ratio now turns out to be approximately 1.1. And if we get our exact values, we find a new frequency of 877 hertz. That is observed by this observer here as the plane approaches him. Now for the observer as the plane is moving away from him, here we can also see that those high pressure areas of the sound wave are spread out. So he will observe a frequency that is lower than the initial value. Beyond that, the rest of the equation is the same as what we previously calculated. 800 hertz is our initial value. The fraction, again, includes 340 for the velocity of sound, plus or minus zero because that's the velocity of the observer. And now 340 for sound on the bottom. For the source, this time we need to add 30. 
And again, you can work on memorizing those rules of positive or negative, but just mathematically, it's easy to see that in this situation, we need the bottom part of the fraction to be the larger value, and so we must add the 30 for this part of the problem. Uh, if we work out that fraction again, we have 800 hertz as the initial frequency, 0.92 as the ratio, and our new frequency value then, as the jet passes, is now 735 hertz as the plane moves away.